Little is known about Sacagawea's life before she met Lewis and Clark. Sacagawea's childhood ended when she was between 10 and 12. She was taken by an enemy tribe, the Hidatsa Indians, and made a slave when her Shoshone tribe was attacked. Sacagawea was won in a card game by a hard-drinking white man named Tucson Charbonneau. Charbonneau took Sacagawea to Fort Mandan because he had heard that some men were looking for a guide that could speak the languages of the western tribes and were going to pay well for the assistance. At this time, Sacagawea was only 15 and pregnant. Meriwether Lewis was asked by Thomas Jefferson to explore and map the new land acquired through the Louisiana Purchase. Lewis chose his friend, William Clark, to assist him on the expedition they called the Corps of Discovery. Their main goal was to see if it was possible to reach the Pacific Ocean from St. Louis on a single river. They were also gathering samples of soil, rocks, and plants on their expedition, as well as looking for new creatures to bring back home with them. Lewis and Clark met Sacagawea at Fort Mandan. Sacagawea and her husband, Charbonneau, were living in a nearby Hidatsa Mandan village. Lewis and Clark were especially drawn to Sacagawea because she could speak both Shoshone and Hidatsa languages. They saw her as a great resource that could help them get horses and other resources to guide them westward. They hired Charbonneau as an interpreter, and soon after, Sacagawea and Charbonneau moved to the American Fort Mandan to prepare for the journey. Charbonneau and Sacagawea proved to be a great interpreter team. Sacagawea was the only woman to accompany the men on their expedition. The expedition west began about March 1805 and ended in August of 1806. While at Fort Mandan, Sacagawea gave birth to her son, Jean-Baptiste Charbonneau, in February of 1805. The birth was violent and Sacagawea nearly lost her life giving birth to her son. Meriwether Lewis, who was the group's doctor, helped her by making a mixture that was a Shoshone custom. It helped her and Sacagawea survive the birth of her first child. The group nicknamed the boy Pomp for his constant dancing and frolicking around. Pomp traveled on the expedition with Sacagawea and Charbonneau on Sacagawea's back. Sacagawea proved to be more than an ordinary guide on the trip. She could tell whether a single moccasin track in the dust came from a friendly tribe or one that might attack them. She was able to gather food for the group such as wild artichokes and white apples. Some of her other jobs included digging for roots, collecting edible plants, and picking berries. All of these were used as food and sometimes as medicine. When the group made it to the Rocky Mountains, they were starving. Sacagawea found an old friend named Jumping Fish on the journey. Jumping Fish led the group to the Shoshone camp nearby. While sitting in a circle with the tribe, Sacagawea recognized the chief of the Shoshone tribe. She bounded across the room into the chief's arms. The chief was her brother, Kamawake, whom she had not seen for over five years. They had a very emotional reunion and Kamawake told Sacagawea that their parents were dead and only two brothers were still alive. Their reunion proved to be very fruitful for the Corps of Discovery expedition. The expedition was able to get the horses and many other supplies they needed to complete their journey. Once the Corps of Discovery left the Shoshone tribe, they soon made it to the Pacific Ocean. On the return journey east in 1806, Sacagawea again proved to be extremely valuable. She remembered many trails from her childhood and was able to lead the expedition home and navigate the land safely. Once they returned back home, Charbonneau, Sacagawea, and Pomp parted with Lewis and Clark and went to live among the Mandan. While Sacagawea was not given anything as a reward for her help with the expedition, her husband was given $500 and 320 acres of land. Clark had a very difficult time parting with Sacagawea and baby Pomp. He even offered to take Pomp with him to St. Louis and raise him as his son. However, Sacagawea said no and Pomp remained with her. In the fall of 1809, 
Sacagawea, Charbonneau, and Pomp ventured to St. Louis where Charbonneau was taking the kind-hearted Clark up on an offer. Clark would provide the Charbonneau family with land to farm if the parents would agree to let Clark educate Pomp. The farming wasn't successful and Sacagawea and Charbonneau left Pomp in St. Louis with Clark, his godfather. In August of 1812, after giving birth to a daughter, Lizette, Sacagawea's health declined. By December, she was extremely ill with putrid fever. She died at age 25 on December 22, 1812. Clark became the legal guardian to both Lizette and Pomp. Without Sacagawea, the Corps of Discovery expedition may not have been as successful as it was. The group may have experienced resistance and violence from Indian tribes they encountered on their journey. Because of Sacagawea, these tribes weren't threatened by the Corps of Discovery band of men. The Indian tribes weren't threatened by a group who let a woman and an infant travel with them. The group also wouldn't have been able to navigate as easily through the West without experiencing a great deal of problems. They would have had much more difficulty traveling in unexplored and unknown terrain without Sacagawea. Sacagawea was a guiding force through the expedition who proved to have a great deal of knowledge and expertise about traveling the unknown land. She was a great interpreter and helped to keep meetings and exchanges with other tribes they met on their journey peaceful. Sacagawea was an important member of the Corps of Discovery and a major part of the exploration of North America.